Hey yo, it's your boy Ancient Albatross here behind the scenes uh, as usual these days. But anyways, uh, we have our usual suspects tonight of the CU boys. We have Spigs18 or Anthony. We have AD or Alpha Dean. And we also have a very special guest, but I'll, we'll get a little more into that in a little bit. But before we do, just as a quick reminder, if you haven't already, be sure to follow us here on Twitch and subscribe to us over on YouTube. It is a great help to our channel and uh, we really appreciate all the support we've gotten thus far and without further ado dean what are we doing here tonight oh man it's gonna be a good night we got none other than one of our own golden ones you know a member of the cypher unlimited uh family ked hub he's here to talk about his great new game built with the cypher system in mind using the seesaw it's uh called void home should be a wild ride when we get into it he's got some great new ideology going on and still keeps the spirit of cypher system whole and happy and uh we're going to talk about uh, tonight you know the game is actually out there for you to take advantage of on his call coffee and uh ken say hello to the people out there in the interwebs and let's get into this hi everybody um yeah i probably a lot of you know who i am or have seen my name around or something like that whether it's from cypher unlimited or one of the many other TTRPG like YouTuber social circles I am part of, uh, or my name as like a layout artist on like a billion different books these days. Um, but yeah, Ked Hup, you probably probably heard of me, maybe or yeah. probably not. Yeah, I was gonna say he's. I think Golden One is like the fifth or sixth thing on, on your resume. Oh, you, have a, you, you have a phenomenal YouTube channel. You do a ton of work and a bunch of stuff. You know, um, yeah, and you and I, you know, personal I'm going to say, personal like, feelings. you guys asked me to be a golden one, like, two or three times before I finally said yes, because I'm like, I don't, I don't really need to be a mod. And eventually I'm like, all right. You said we left in your bed that changed your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was the threatening letters for sure. <laughs> and the other thing is too i meant to say it i didn't say it, but yes his layouts are absolutely phenomenal if you anybody has got my updated version of malvando's mythic body Mecum, kid did an absolute brilliant job on it and he's got work coming out and other people's things along with his own so yeah if you need a layout uh artist definitely hit this guy up because his work is stellar oh. Oh. welcome back kid my brother, yeah. we love you. It was always a pleasure getting to chat with you. Before we even get into Vault Home, because you know, I know that's why we're here, but but we also a Monica Game Cipher System channel. So I just wanted to pick your brain on the you know Knights of Dust and Neon. What were your first impressions? Your initial thoughts? Oh, I was excite bike all the way. Um, I'd been I'd been asking for cyberpunk stuff all the like for a while. Like there's some cyberpunk stuff out there. Like obviously, like you go like Vert and Blood and Chrome and stuff. Like there's some third party people that have done some some fairly decent cyberpunk ish, although like Vert's its own thing. Um, but to see like Monica Games start to get into this, especially with how they just knocked it out of the park with Rust and Redemption. Uh, I'm super excited and I'm a Western nut. I like once a year hold like a, like a, a spaghetti Western night where we like, we literally make a bunch of spaghetti and sit down and wa watch Westerns. <laughs> so super happy. Like even in void home, I, I try to sprinkle a little Western frontier stuff in there. So like, I'm very excited on what's coming out. And then that, that setting that they've introduced, like everything is just gold and I can't, I can't even. <laughs> I think did, we did all you, feel how the book, What are you most excited for? <sighs> That's a hard decision. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm going to say cyberpunk, I think. I think because it's got a little bit like I love the Western stuff. I love the idea of that new setting, although I don't tend to play in pre-existing settings as often. Um, but I think the cyberpunk thing, it's got a bit, you know, it's a bit more of a sci-fi feel to it. And I've run, I did a cyberpunk one shot with like Bob World Builder and Nerd Immersion and everything in the cyber system before. So I'd really like to see like actual cyberpunk rules like fleshed out for this. That would be really neat. That's awesome. <clears throat> so, and you know, you and a few other members of the Golden Ones had a chance to do a CU takeover of the show. 
Now, yes, how did. was it being on the other side of the stream, and why in the hell was everybody fighting to be out? <laughs> yeah, I, I put that in there. Um. Okay, as we're all, why we're all fighting to be Al? Al's just, Al's just cool. I'm trying not to swear as much. I swear a lot on my streams. Um, no, Al's just. Swear away. All right. Well, Al's just fucking cool, man. I mean, you're you guys are all right as well. Um, I mean, Dean, you've been to my house now, and, and you're like, I like you less because of it. But the other, like, Aunt, you're pretty cool still. And but Al, I mean, he's just dope. <laughs> And, and quit lying to people telling him I've been to your house. And I've been to his door. He let he put he put me in the backyard on a leash, you know, because he would oh. be playing with his cats. It was, it was oh, just it was, it, was, it, was, it was okay. He gave me he gave me a bowl of milk. So that, that is an awkward image. I did not bring my black friend over and put him on a leash. Uh, we're not we're not going to touch that. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm back in the ring with stream over, <laughs> and we're canceled. <laughs> Oh, um, no, no, he was a great host, you guys. I'm just joking. <laughs> no, it was crazy seeing your guys on on the CU street. The what your guys did a great job, but the one thing I said that I was thinking was hey, there was not one argument in the whole street. This can't be a CU street. Right. Well, that's because... Uh, except for well, Eileen like popped in for a hot moment, but the ninety nine percent of the stream we, we were all just Commonwealth members, no Americans, so we had to work together. <laughs> Very. And, and uh, on a side note, thank you so much for doing that. You know, we really. I, mean, I know we do it on you on short notice, and like always, you always have our back, and you. You jumped, you know, jumped right in, willing to help us out. We really appreciate that. No worries. Yeah, second time I got to do it. That now to like run the stream for you, and it was pretty fun. I liked it. Yeah, we really appreciate it. It was just a lot going on that day for all of us, and we really do appreciate it. So thank you again. I get that. <laughs> so let's let's get into the nitty gritty. This is what we're here for, right? Let's talk about Void Home. Can you tell our audience a summary of what the game is about and what theme are you trying to go with go for with this project? Uh I'm not gonna do it anymore. I'm done. <laughs> no. Um yeah, so Void Home. My favorite genres uh is the mashup of like sci-fi and horror, um, like aliens, event horizon, just mm, dripping gooey gooey goodness like those. Uh and so that I've, I've wanted not only to do my own setting with that, which I've kind of been spitballing in my head for years, but there were certain things that myself and old Gus, who has been monumentally wonderful in helping me in this, um, had, well, there's been some stuff in the cipher system. I don't want to say cleaned up because the cipher system's a very elegant system. We absolutely love it. But there's some things we wanted to reshape, a few like terms we wanted to standardize. Um, there's there was just some things we wanted to just kind of like shape in a certain direction, especially since we wanted it to it's not open like a universal system. It's meant to have a focused theme, a focused genre, and there's parts of it that we wanted to do that with. So TLDR, I guess to get into it, I talk too much, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, it's a sci-fi survival horror that's got, it's got a bit of that sprinkling like frontier Wild West feel to it because you're on the frontiers of human survival. Um, but yeah, it's a, a sci-fi survival horror it takes place in pretty close to now, but also kind of the future because wibbly wobbly timey wimey shenanigans, that type of thing. <laughs> So would you consider it kind of an alternate uh, an alternate world, an alternative world? Are you basing it on, you know, the world we know today or how you handle it? So it is, uh, it starts with a sort of an alternate history. It is in the late 70s. I forget if I chose 78 or 79. Um, when the calamity happens, basically a big old chunk is torn out of the earth. We realize that it's not only whatever happened, we don't know if we caused it, aliens caused it, like divine intervention, who knows at this point. Um, I, I purposely don't explain it. But it's also a portal to another place. And as a result, 
it time moves like the events move a bit differently because at that point humanity goes into survival mode so except for like space exploration and certain survival technology all other technology kind of stagnates so it's got that like retro tech vibe because i wanted to keep something of like you know like the original alien movie like that's like the level of technology you see despite decades having gone past because you're not really going to cool make cool like entertainment technology when you're working on just survival type thing um and then due to some timey wimey shenanigans of time moving differently on the other side of the portal and us sending a ship there and then sending another ship there um it's there's a civilization that's had time to grow slowly on the other side and then there's the ship sent from earth that's been sent to well they believe be the last survivors because then the earth goes boom and so be it that sounds real cool man so you know that being said if someone wanted to support this project how can they go about finding it so the main place right now is on my kofi or coffee i don't know how you're ever supposed to pronounce it um, but on my, it's the, the, the links will be in there. The, the Kofi link there, it's in my Kofi shop. So don't do it as a donation, do it as, as a purchase. Um, there is on the Kofi shop and right now you just get the early access packages. Um, the full book, although a lion's chunk of it is written, um, I want to dole it out in pieces to just test the new mechanics because we've reworked some things um, in small chunks to make sure everything is good in stages. Um, so we're doing that every like month and a half, two months, whatever, hopefully on track for that. Um, if you go there, you will get those early access packages. Right now there's the two packages available, the 15 and $30 one. The $15 one will be, you'll just get the core book. The $30 one, you get the core book and the uh, opposition codex, which is like, bestiary like our version of the bestiary basically why kofi i know we spoke about a little bit of this offline but uh why kofi as opposed to just doing a, a backer kit or a kickstarter well um there's uh, there was a several reasons some of which i'm not going to go fully into here um but uh i didn't because i'm doing 95% of the project myself, I'm doing the layout, the writing, the writing, the art, the everything. The only thing I really need to hire as an editor. Um, I didn't really need a lot in the way of financial backing for it, per se. So I didn't really need the big, a big to do about it. And honestly, I've got a lot of stress in my life. I don't need the stress going, is it going to fund? Is it not going to fund? Um, whereas like if I did it on Kofi, like three guys could have bought it and I would have been golden anyways so i i didn't it was a less stressful approach for me uh and kofi only takes it's like five percent or less like off the top versus the like 30 percent from drive through rpg or whatever right now so um i i started on kofi although i i did note it in there um i'm pretty sure everything should move smoothly for this i do have to double check it but as far as i know um, when it fully releases, I can also give everyone that backed me on Kofi a coupon link to drive through RPG to make sure that you can add it to your library there as well. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a, just a general idea of how far off that is? Like how, how far off, you know, uh, when, when people see a final version? Uh, for the core book, I'm not too sure, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, it depends on, it depends on how much feedback we receive and if there's anything we want to reshape. Um, like I said, the, um, a good chunk of the book is done. The, the entire first section, which is all like the basic rules, character creation, everything like that is I'd say 99% finished. Most of the world lore chunk is I'd say 99% finished. Um, it's really the last section of the book that has a lot of extras to it. Um, old Gus right now is working on a billion tables for me for the world generation system. We've got full like combat, like uh, ship rules and the, like a mini bestiary thing like in the book itself. So that's the part we're still tinkering with. Um, and the, the art and the layout of what you showed in the playtest is fantastic. So I'm I'm really looking forward to see what the final product is going to be. But um, you have mentioned it earlier; it's fully compatible with the Cipher system. Yep. 
And you know, Gus have made some pretty drastic changes to some of the system mechanically. Can you tell us about the differences between the two versions of Cypher? And what is the conflict system? Okay, so uh, we, I think we've done this smartly in that we have managed to turn the combat slash conflict system on its head to be different while still making it fully compatible to other Cypher products. I'm pretty proud of the fact we managed to pull that off. Um, but basically, the conflict system is... So Cypher, it, Cypher's beautiful, and I've always run it slightly differently where I allow other things to do damage than just like abilities or attacks or anything like that. I've allowed players to use their skills to do quote unquote damage to things, but it always felt kind of off to say that. So we, the first thing we did is we got rid of the terms damage. We got rid of the terms health, everything like that. Um, instead, your character deals impact to the presence of things. Um, we do this because it, anything could do impact. In the example video I just posted, um, one person was doing impact to some robots with their gun while their friend was impacting the situation with skills and some welding tools. Um, and it all is impact versus presence and allows you to be more creative because in a sci-fi environment, it's not like fantasy where it's just big dumb heroes killing the bad guys. You look at Aliens or Event Horizon, 99% of the movie, well, maybe not 99, but a lot of the movie is like them just figuring shit out with their skills or psychological horror or something like that. So we wanted to make that change first before anything. Um, then we move on to the conflict system. And now Cypher is already leagues ahead of a regular initiative system. Um, I'm not going to name names, but some of the D&D games I've been in over time waiting for my turn and be like all right i did my turn i did 30 seconds i gotta wait 40 minutes now till it's my turn it's unchanging we know what order it's going in and i get to just sort of check out cool um cypher advances that thankfully a little bit um with the gm not having to roll for things and the fact that if you go on the same part of the stack you can like discuss among yourself who rolls but it's still a turn order, and we wanted to change that. So with the conflict system, um, I was talking with uh, Zeus, Zeus 9? Is that what it was? Uh, I was talking with um, the one guy, Zeus, the other day. And after I did the video, and I realized I should have said this in the video. But really, it's like if everyone had cards from a deck of cards. And the GM can lay down his cards in whatever order he wants. Doesn't matter how big or small the creature is. If he wants to start with a small one, start with a small one. And the players have their own actions. So think of them as, as a card. And they can say, I'm going to play my card after you. Or they could say, I would like to interrupt you, even though you've declared what your card's going to do. And then you roll your initiative. If you're successful, you can interrupt them. Which is good, because if someone's about to throw a grenade on a tiny spaceship, you want to say no and stop that. So uh, the conflict system is all about players constantly paying attention to when they want to act or not act. Yeah, Zeus Legion, that's what it is. Uh, I, was, I was putting plus nine, a.k.a. Old Gus, together with Zeus, I think. Yeah, I thought you so, Zeus Legion, too. <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's all about the fact that we wanted to get rid of the initiative order, and we wanted to just be like a more interactive experience so that you can pop in and out of role play without that harsh break of, okay, it is combat now, roll initiative. Pretty cool. So, <clears throat> as you know, I, mean, um, I got to actually see a little bit of this in, um, in action. And I, I want to say that it's very, it makes combat way more streamlined, in my opinion. And I'm excited to see it has um, it could have, you could use it in just be, besides Void Home. I like I I was you know when I was first reading the mechanics, I saw like two or three different games that I I could implement this system into. I I, I thought it was simple and beautiful, to be honest. And those are the best mechanics. To me, a simple yet quick to understand, quick to implement mechanic, especially the cipher system. That that's just a golden spot. I oh, had I had a eureka moment like just yeah. like yesterday, realizing I, this could work for any game with an initiative system. It didn't have to be for this. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was gonna say. I could see using it 
just about anywhere, any game that I run, it, it just, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk off stream about it, but I think it's a, it's a good idea. Like you could like, just throw those rules into the back of like anything you got and say, Hey, here's an alternative method, you know, you know, cause you know, some people are kind of stuck in their ways. They, they haven't had the paradigm shift. And I'm glad that you like to use that term as well, because it just uh, works all the time. <laughs> all the time. Know, it's, it's the truth though, you know? So I like the fact that you did it that way. And I think, you know, you might even want to just write that up, pet up and offer it as a, as a little, you know, a, addition, a cypher sister, slight cypher sister addendum, if you will, you know, or, mm -hmm. or a game addendum, because it could work for any game. It could work for D and D. It could work for, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever system you're using. It's really, I mean, I'm a little bit jealous that I didn't think of it because it's awesome. <laughs> you know, it really right. is it's an awesome thing, you know, and, you know, that being said, Cypher players love options. You know, mm -hmm. what can we expect, you know, from Void Home will have some new options for players and how can they be used with other Cypher system games aside from the conflict resolution system? Okay, so uh, character options to and from Void Home to other Cypher systems need very little in the way of tweaking. Um, if for the most part, I have what's called the tag systems to sort of streamline certain reusable bits of rules. I think it's from my time as an engineer. I just felt like I needed to put that in there. Um, that's not needed per se. It just helps clarify things and make things a little visually easier to recognize. But for the most part, you should be able, if you have like a character that you made like with the CSR and like stars of fire or whatever, and you want to bring them in to void home. Um, I don't think there's any major changes you really need to make. Other than a couple small things, you got to add the fact that you have a dread score, a bulk score, and an encumbrance. Um, which, if you want to know what those are, they're in the book. <laughs> but you have to see. Uh, dread is the big one, which uh, I will I will touch upon. Uh, originally, I was going to name it stress, and then a certain other MCG products started saying they had a stress, and I'm like, oh, uh, uh, but I think it was actually for the best because dread flows better into what it represents i think than anything else um it does sound cooler and i think i think i actually can blame old gus for that one i think old gus came up with dread for that one well dread um, makes perfect sense with it being a horror setting anyway you know yeah. i mean so, you know with the fact that there, there's the horror element i should say because it's not a horror setting per se you know <laughs> Right. Um, and, and dread can be gotten multiple ways. Like it's not just um, the GM like influencing the scene and saying, well, you've got dread now because you did something or something scary popped up. Uh, dread can also happen if you've um, moved on the status track, which is what we've renamed the damage track. Or um, if you have caused or helped cause the death of another human being at the end of the scene, you gain dread because that's a big deal. <laughs> right. Do you got um, new folk guy for characters? Uh, so as the actual for the actual character options, um, there are five new types. Um, there are uh for the folk guy, some of them are brand spanking new and some of them are just heavily reworked. Um, most of them are new. Uh we've got oh, I think we're gonna be launching with around 25 unless old Gus and I just sit down and have another one of our jam sessions and pump out even more of them. Um, but yeah, so we've got five new types. Uh, we've got probably around 25 new foci. Uh, the descriptors, we've got four descriptors. Um, I do descriptors a little bit differently. They're not just like combat, stealth, stuff like that. Because I, uh, not descriptors, sorry, I meant flavors. Um, so uh, I like to do flavors a little bit differently. I use flavors for things like fantasy races, personally. So what I did with flavors in this one is the flavors are cat, dog, robot, and vicissitude, which is just the next stage in human evolution, um, which there's a awesome. huge amount of uh, entire wars fought over the fact that people uh, are very prejudiced against them and hate them. <laughs> But stuff like that. But cat and dog, that's not cat and dog people, literally just a cat or a dog. I am looking forward to see what people do with that. I know you confuse descriptors with flavors, but do you have additional descriptors as well? No, because every descriptor is custom in Void Home. Uh, instead, there's a new system for just 
picking elements with a couple of points and stuff and making your descriptor with a bunch of uh, example uh, like names for them and whatnot. Uh, I have been thinking of putting in some example ones if you don't want to do those mental gymnastics and you just want to be like, I just want to be anxious and like point and say that's mine. So I, I might actually like prefabricate some, but yeah, you go in, you pick your points. Uh, there's like a snag if you want extra points, which is like some sort of downfall for the descriptor and you make your own. That's awesome. I'm really excited to play around with that. What I think you've capitalized on, I just like to throw it out there. I think it sounds to me like what you did with this is added a bunch of fiddly more bits to Cypher. They're simplistic, <laughs> but they add to the simplistic elegance of Cypher system, you know. And so all your little fiddly bits, they, they are perfect because if you don't want to use them, you don't have to. If you want to use them, plug them right in. And I think this that's going to actually uh, be a plus because, you know, you have some people who are mechanics lovers. But if you if you put them down the way you're putting them down, Gus, I mean, Gus, Ketta, it's really great. I really like the way you're putting them together because it still is in the spirit of Cypher. It's simple mechanics that have modularity and flexibility to do whatever it is you want it to do. So that's really that that's a plus. That's a you know, chef's kiss right there. To me, that's always the most important bit of Cypher is to me, Cypher is when I build on my campaign, Cypher gives me a bunch of Lego bricks to stick together to make it the game that I want. So mm -hmm. I try to make it everything very modular. So if if one of them Lego bricks isn't to your taste, it's fine. Chuck it out. The game should run perfectly fine without it. <laughs> hey guys, if if um you have a uh, question for Ken, uh, either about Void Home or whatever you want to ask Ken. Just preface it with the word question in chat, and we'll definitely ask it in the end. Oh, we, we talked about character options, but how about ciphers and artifacts? Do you plan to create any new ones specifically for Void Home? Yes. Um, so in the playtest, I just used ciphers from the SRD uh, because we were still combing through to figure out what we wanted to do with those. Um, but I, it's going to be a mix of some standbys that you're probably going to be familiar with, but there's also going to be a ton of new ones as well. Um, I've got a couple pages of just point form ideas of things I want to turn into ciphers. Um, I'm a big fan, especially for genres like this, of subtle ciphers specifically. Like, there's going to be plenty of ma manifest ciphers. Those are always super easy, especially after years of playing things like Numenera and stuff. Cool, I found an alien trinket. Awesome. Um, but I really like the idea of subtle ciphers um, that can do some, some pretty incredible things. And one thing, I actually had weird feedback on this the other day. Um, Ciphers to me should be exciting. I want every cipher to be cool and interesting. This is why I'm not keen on ciphers that do something like restore one of your pools. Um, in the Isle of Dreaded Accursed, when I was doing some creation and editing on the cipher edition of that there, people noticed that I put healing potions and stuff in as one use artifacts instead of ciphers. Because I was like, if, if you're going to be limited on your ciphers, I want every cipher you have to be cool, to be awesome, to be exciting. Not just be like, oh, all three of my cipher slots are taken up with, I restore physical, I restore my might pool. Cool. Like, I want it to be interesting. So all my ciphers are going to lean towards that. Whereas like more mechanically useful things might be more like a uh, artifact that always depletes, like a single consumable artifact. Can you think of one off the top of your head just to give us an example? Uh, well, like the healing things, like like a hypo spray for for healing or something like that um, to like make it more straightforward. There's um, being a low tech system like that. A lot of unless it's alien gobbledygook that you find, a lot of it's going to be like simple, like small gizmos, a lot of drugs and um, me medicinal type type things that you can find as well. Um, a lot of things that I want to do, I, I've got a couple of ciphers in there. I haven't released anything about this. This is my first time talking about it. I have a lot of ciphers in there that are pretty beefy, even for ciphers, but at a cost. 
um a lot of like the like there's ciphers that are flavored as like a, a heavy experimental drug that give this really awesome cutting edge thing but there's a side effect and i want people to play with that double-edged sword and see what interesting like do i want to use this do it all right like i want it to be a choice yeah i think it's going to be exciting i got i got a chance to um you know talk to you about a lot of the stuff that that's working on on board home and i'm i'm really excited for the not only the direction the game is headed but the stories you could tell as a gm you know like mm -hmm. I, I, you could see, like, if you were using uh, Alien comes to mind because, you know, th that's, like, the obvious. But you could do Firefly. There's a ton of sci-fi oh, yeah. that you could do with, with, with just the concept and the way the mechanics work. So I'm really that's excited. One thing to um, I would like to touch upon, the first thing you see when you go to the character management area isn't anything about your character. It's about your group. It's the scenario that you pick um now there's a generic scenario you can choose as a group if you want to do something custom like a normal game would be however if you want to do you know you want to be bounty hunters or choose lost and afraid as one of the harder scenarios or um corporate indenture i can't say words um like there's a lot of scenarios i have where that's how you get your starting equipment it gives you like maybe a starting ship it tells you like a, a nice easy way for the gm to begin the campaign um so the first thing the group can sit down can do is is figure out a scenario to work well, with. When you say scenario, let's backtrack a little. What exact? How does a scenario work? So, so it's just on, the, like your campaign. Hold on, just a minute. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's actually one of our questions. So let's just do from the audience. Okay. So since you brought it up, well, we'll just we'll just ask you now. Uh, how do you actually start a scenario? How do you start a, a game? In Whitehall. Oh, Whitehall, what is this scenario? <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I was so, asking. Really, really easy. The scenario is, is think of it just kind of like a campaign package. Um, it it gives you like what the theme of your characters you are likely to make are. Like if you choose the cleaners, think of yourselves as the um the uh, colonial marines from aliens type thing. So you know that you'd all be playing various types of military personnel or at least support for the military personnel um and if you chose that it would it would also you'd all start with the options for certain types of suits like the armored armadillo suit rather than the regular lineage suit other scenarios would normally give you you might start with extra weapons and support because you're military a different ship and then it'll give you like examples of uh like how to start like with the cleaners um the play test i gave didn't have all of these but in the full book there there's they're a little bit more fleshed out but for like the cleaners for example it gives you a couple of quick campaign starts that the gm doesn't know how they want to get it going and for like the cleaners like one of them is like basically an alien style bug hunt like you you start out dropping in on a ship like already in the middle of shit's hitting the fan let's go um and the different scenarios will it's it, I try to make it so it's easier, especially if you're playing in uh, co-op play, solo play, or like a one-shot. I wanted to make it really easy to be like, all right, let's just jump into this. We got an idea. This gets, gets us all in the same footprint. Let's go. So it gives you options for all three scenarios, right? It gives you rules um, for solo play. It gives you rules for a, a co-op to a two-person duo. And it, choosing your scenario will choose your starting point. I guess your ship and everything else. Now, when it comes to solo and co-op play, I want to say I have soft support for it right now. Um, I, I help it along by the fact that I've got certain guiding things and scenarios. When it comes to the world plate generation, like we're going to have extensive tables you can roll on. And the uh, NPC stats are actually going to have um a randomized action block for each npc if the gm doesn't want to have to think about what it does or if you're in solo play you could roll to see what it does um so there's kind of support there for it but it's not like firmly like this is how you solo play um but honestly i don't think you would need much beyond that to do a solo play i just i wanted to make it as easy on the gm as possible if there even is a gm Oh, All right. Right. that's awesome. So, 
at this point, you know, we've talked about a lot of stuff, but are there any other cool new rules or interesting stuff in Void Home that you just like to touch on or give our, our audience a preview of? Uh, oh, we have so many things. Um, what have I, I, I released? And uh, well, one of the things I think we I actually could touch upon a fact is I want this to be um, kind of an open living world. One thing you'll notice for anyone that's read through the licensing area is although you can't reprint anything in the Void Home book, um, I give you full access to reference or expand upon anything in the book. Uh, like obviously the stuff covered under the seesaw is covered under the seesaw. Um, but for everything else, if you want to make a Void Home adventure, if you want to make a Void Home expansion book, if you want to do anything like that and publish it and earn money off of it, go for it um i a lot of people make their settings and they say this is my setting and i get i get why they would do that um but i i mean i don't have all the time in the world to write and i would kind of like to see what other people make out of it so if anyone else has ideas and they want to expand upon it and stuff like that i think i'm hoping that being a open living setting where the community gets to decide what's cool and what's not will just help it grow that sounds awesome. Uh, Speaking of which, they can go right now and back it and pretty much get all the playtest material as soon as they back it, correct? If they yes, go to right now? You'll get, you'll get the first playtest package, which is, um, it's not like the full book. It is just some of, is, is the core rules you need to play the, the game. Um, it is five pre-generated characters? Six? Five? I think it's five. Um, and a adventure that um, I, uh, although I wrote, I needed some information and ideas for, and there was a certain person called Spigs18 that actually helped me come up with a, a lot of the ideas for the adventure. Um, it's a really so. good adventure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, it's, uh, there is an adventure. I won't spoil anything in it if you're not the one running it. Yeah, so you go ahead and read it. It's a, it's a small, it's a short one. It's meant for like a one shot. You could stretch it out for a couple of sessions if you wanted. Uh, well, but you know, I'm right. at Cypercon. That's one of my Cypercon games. Oh yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's go. You'll have like more complete rules by that point. Cause that's, yeah, that's our, or possibly the full book. We'll see. <laughs> you had mentioned about people working on this, and I know you are constantly working on not only this project, but a bunch of other things. Yes. Uh, can you talk about what other projects you're working on or what are you excited to be working on? Because I know you have a long list uh, of stuff. I can talk about some of them <laughs> right now. Um, yes, I can talk about some of them. Uh, I, so I just, what, last month I finished doing the layout for Underground Oracle's Quasiloth Gazette, um, that they're, they're going to be doing a, I think, quarterly gazette to introduce their, like, one, um, setting to the world. I'm going to do stuff with that. Um, I'm doing, uh, there's a D&D &D 5e product called the Mimic Nomicon. Uh, I did their last book for them. And I think they want me to do the future books for them as well. Um, that's kind of neat. If you still play D and D five E, I'm sure there's some people out there that do. Um, <laughs> it was uh, it's really neat. They've had a lot of like it's just mimics, but it's like all sorts of different types of mimics. Like the last one was focused on mimics you would find in a grocery store. Like <laughs> it's really weird stuff. It was kind of neat. Um, yeah, uh, I am. I also have a. I don't know how much I want to get into this, but what the hey. Uh, so I, on top of Void Home, because there's been times I'm either feeling burnt out, I need to work on something else, or uh, I'm waiting for feed feedback from Void Home, so I can't really tinker with something until that happens anyways. Um, I've been working on my own system, and it's called Grim Relics, and uh, I actually just finished just yesterday tearing half of it apart and saying I didn't like it and starting to redo it, so... That's going to be a thing, but um, it is uh, it's just a compilation of like all of my favorite TP TTRPG systems, like mushed together with my own like primary resolution mechanics. So 
uh, I am working on something that it's kind of got this like isekai anime over the top feel to it, but oh, that sounds yeah. awesome. that'll, that'll be a thing. That'll be a thing uh, eventually. Um, and then I've got some other projects. I've got a YouTube video. I did recordings with Charles, Ryan, um, and Gonza gaming and some other people. I'm also got, uh, I got to do some recordings with people from like Paizo and, and free league and everything. I'm trying to put together basically a documentary it started small and it keeps growing but i want to do a document like a, a video on youtube on start to finish if you want to do your own book or your own rpg content and publish it what are all the options i have what are advice that you can get from people in the industry stuff like that um start to finish how do i make how do i do the needful and make an rpg product and uh that's taking me way longer than i want it to do <laughs> to, to be a thing like a great resource i think people would love to see that and learn and just absorb what the process is one of the things i actually did is some of the income i made from void home i've actually fed into that video to order proofs from all of the print on demand services so we're talking Amazon, Lulu, uh, Barnes and Nobles, all of them. And uh, I'm going to measure like how long it takes me, the quality of the product, um, everything like that, because I want to see for everybody what options you have aside from drive through RPG, because not the biggest fan of Lightning Source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is awesome. And I, I know you have mentioned this a while ago. I don't know if it's still a thing. But I, I remember a couple of months ago you were telling me about a kaiju project. Is that still in the when, back of your yeah. mind? Are you still trying to work on that? Uh, so that would be a small one. It was like my own little, like themed white book. It was called When the Ground Shakes. Um, and it wasn't just about kaiju. It was basically about dealing with rules for anything that's larger than life something like expansively large so it would encompass things like kaiju large mecha stuff like that um because i've got i've got rules already some of them kind of being in void home actually to deal with such things um void home has I won't go into it too much because it'll really, this isn't going to release for another like three play tests. Um, but they're in the ship combat to deal with the different scales of stuff. There's basically a scale multiplier that works into it and in the way it works. Um, I was going to refine this and make it for these like large situational conflicts and whatnot, bringing what I've learned and, and refined within Void Home and putting it to just dealing with these larger than life weirdness nice that sounds all good no i said that just sounds awesome that's a a, a really nice uh a, a nice concept in general for the simple fact you're going to bring something again that's pluggable you know that you can just plug right into cypher which you know i, I don't think we can say it enough you know that that modularity just makes all the difference in the world mm -hmm. Not for nothing, um, Ken, that cover marker of the mock up, uh, mock up of the cover you had was freaking awesome, too. <laughs> I, I was excited just by seeing the mock up cover you showed me. Yeah, I think yeah. I did. Uh, it was like the outline of a Godzilla esque, but not yeah. copyright version. Um, yeah. And then inside it was like, I think it was like an exploding, like a nuclear plume or something like that, if I remember yeah, right. Yeah, it was really cool. So. Uh, I guess we're gonna move on. To, uh, <laughs> guess we're gonna move on to audience questions now. Um, we got a couple. Uh, first one is from Miller nine four six one. He says, "I think I know the answer, but has the second update released yet?" And I believe he's referring to Void Home. Uh, not yet. I was waiting for a little bit more feedback. Um, the feedbacks. The feedback's actually been really good. I've made a couple of tweaks on things. I don't always listen to the feedback. I'm not going to source out the game design like certain other wizardly companies seem to have done these days. But uh, I, uh, I, I, I do take the feedback uh, fairly seriously when there's like constructive criticism. And there's been several people in the community that have given me some 
some really good ideas and feedback on a few things, mostly about just like certain clarifying things or adding a few extra bits and bobs. So um, it was important to me to get that so that I can put it into it for when I release it because the next update is going to have the full, it's basically the full first third of the book with like the, the character, the char- all of the character creation options and everything like that, or at least most of them. I still have to refine a few. Oh, I'm gonna... actually, if you back the product and you want to give um, Ken some feedback, the Cypher Unlimited Discord server has a channel just for that. It's called yeah. Void Home. Join the Cypher Unlimited <laughs> Discord server and uh, give um, give your input and suggestions in that channel itself, and uh, Ken help him reply to you. Yeah, and, for uh, sure. I, I appreciate that as well. I appreciate all the feedback that's been happening over on my Discord, but I, I did make sure to link over to the fact that, like, I mean, it is a Cypher product, even if it does have a few tweaks to it. Um, and there's been a lot of good chit chat on over in this as well. Plus, you can get answer questions in other areas about other things at the same time. And I'm just going to tell you this to you, to you guys out there. One thing about Kenov, I can tell you, she's very, he's very good at sussing out you know, the the import or the impactful aspect of what's being presented. You know, um, by far, you know, he turned my mythic Mari Vikram into a work of art just by those conversations back and forth to clarify and make things, you know, wholly understandable to the masses versus just what goes on in your mind. Because sometimes we think about things and we just see it through a, a specific lens but the rest of the world doesn't. So that is huge. That is massive. And, you know, you know, just take a lesson when you start reading Void Home and so on and so forth and look at how things are presented. Because I think presentation is another huge aspect of the paradigm shift, how it's presented to you. And uh, so, yeah, Ken, thanks a lot, man. That's that's awesome. Well, I think with Mel Vandals, you you knew how you wanted it to work. And the thing is, you can never edit your own product because you've looked at it for too long and you knew, you knew how it worked. But then when I read it, I'm like, I don't know how this works. <laughs> and I felt so awkward at first, but I'm like, Dean, no. <laughs> and, uh, I just like, I gave the, the suggestions and stuff, but like, you can't edit your own stuff. That's why the one thing I, I do have to hire for in Void Home is an editor. So I set the expectations now. The playtests you're getting, an editor has not touched these. This is just my own smooth brain trying to train through this and make it presentable with my word vomit till you can hopefully understand it. Jack One Spade asks, what is your favorite sci-fi movie or a top three if one is too hard? Oh my gosh. Sci-fi is my jam. Um, okay, as much as I love sci-fi horror, so obviously that some of those are going to be in there, top favorite sci-fi might have to be Arrival. Um, I know it's slow burn. It was not for everybody. It was primarily a, a movie about communication. But I think to me, everything about that, the strangeness, the otherness, the, the trying to think differently, everything about that movie was was what a sci-fi could be. Um, uh, that, that has to be my tops. And then, of course, start start counting down the list on like sci-fi like horrors you get your event horizon alien um i love aliens but uh aliens the second movie is not a horror it's an action movie yeah people need to realize that we've had that argument multiple times (laughs) yeah definitely an action movie yeah uh, which is, it's not bad. I love aliens. Don't get me wrong. Um, of the two alien movies that have ever been released, uh, those, those are, they're both great. Cause there, there haven't been others. Um, although the, I, I don't know if you have all seen the trailer for the new alien movie side bar, um, chef's kiss. I am waiting for that one. That looks good. <laughs> So we, we, we talked about that, and that's really cool. So just real quick, though, I mean, you did say something about loving Western. How do you feel about things that have adapted like that, like Firefly, you know, or or The Expanse that have a little, like The Expanse to me has a Western feel of it being 
you know, the new frontier and figuring out, you know, survival, you know, it's like home on the range or something like that, where Firefly is more like, you know, the gunslinger Westerns and so on and so forth. Yeah. What, what's your feelings on those two? Uh, so he asked what my favorite movie was, but if I had to go favorite TV shows, The Expanse has to be up there. I love The Expanse. Um, partly for the storyline. I wish they had gone further in the story because I'd read the books as well. And it gets pretty crazy. Um, but par partly because it is a bit of a harder sci-fi. Like if the ship's not moving, you don't have gravity. Like, and the ships are built like an apartment complex rather than laid laid out horizontally like like Star Wars or Star Trek would be because there's no artificial gravity. Like just the little things like that Mm, really good for me. I love that stuff. But I mean, I'm a trained engineer and I was halfway through like a master's in physics. So like, that's my bag. Um, Firefly, I have watched Firefly more times than I can count. Um, the DVDs that I had, I wore out. I didn't know you could wear DVDs out. So um, I, yeah, <laughs> absolutely adore Firefly. And I mixing Western with sci-fi. To me, a good... A good sci-fi has a little Western in it. You even look at Alien. There's a little Western in that. Like a little oh, yeah. frontier. Like, it's, it's, I feel like they belong together for sure. Well, have you, you know, know I, played the Expanse game? Have I played which the, which, which Expanse game? Does the, the RPG? Have a RPG? Oh, yes, the RPG? I haven't played it yet, no. Yeah. I've, 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 I've never even looked at it, but uh, I was always wondering if anyone ever gave it a shot. I have it. I have not played it. I've read it. You know, it's it's cool, but I haven't had a chance to play it. But who published now, it? One one last question, Kent. You know, since you okay. made that statement, and this was because this is an argument I've had over the years as well. How do you look at the original Star Trek series? Do you see the Western in that? Ah, uh, well, okay, yes and no. There's some. There's some pretty god awful episodes in the original Star Trek. Oh, but even they know there were some pretty god awful episodes. Yes, they do. Um, but no, that is a hundred percent, hundred percent got some Western influence. That that it's literally like to boldly go like that that whole hey, thing. The They're frontier. pushing the frontier. That is it is one hundred percent just a weird West. You just happen to be on a spaceship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always called the crew the original Enterprise. They were all space cowboys, you yeah. know, if you really think about it. So it was yeah, pretty cool. It, it was very lawless. They're always getting into bar brawls. Uh, like, yeah, very much a Western, whereas like Deep Space Nine was a soap opera. Oh. And, oh, and old Gus said Firescape Forever. That's another great show. I liked Firescape. I didn't get into it as much, but I thought it was pretty good. For sure. So, right. anything else you want to tell us about Void Home before we, we go into some CU business? And I could talk about it all day, uh, but I think there's still a lot of things we're coming to terms on, like changing or tweaking or figuring out. Uh, I am ex super excited for Gus and I to solidify those world plate generation tables so to give a little rundown what i mean by world plate so the main setting takes place in this system that you've traveled to which is an artificial system where it's this black point of something in the middle people don't know what it is and then around this is a cloud of these hexagonal continent-sized world plates and that is the bulk of what the exploration in the system is about. There are three planets to explore as well, but the bulk of it is these hexagonal world plates. I mean, it's it's almost um, almost like a Dyson swarm, but it's not a Dyson swarm because it's not meant to capture energy. It's just a whole bunch of these things. So what Gus and I are doing is obviously there's going to be there's a bunch of pre done ones in the setting already. Um, and you can make your own as much as you want, and they range all over the place for physical structure and their elements and how they work and everything. But we are making a whole section of the book just on generating these things using what we call the cater system, which is something I should know what it means because I came up with it. It's complications, areas, things, environment, and residence. 
I believe it is. Um, Can and, and I have he, one more question, which I think sure. is a good one. He, yeah. he says, does Void Home include magic or psionics, or is it technology only? There is very subtle and limited in the way of psionics. Um, the vicissitude flavor you get, um, like the like some empathy or, or various minor telekinetic powers, like move things around. Um, the vast majority of the otherness or strangeness is not under the player's purview. For the majority, most of it, you are. Uh, someone described Void Home, which I thought was pretty good, as uh, it has the demeanor of a hard sci-fi with the rules of a soft sci-fi. Or right. they there was something like that. Because it, it's it's got that, like, the expanse feel to it where you're just people dealing with weirdness. But I don't make you calculate the delta V of a Homan transfer between two celestial bodies as much as... I kind of would geek out over that. I really don't think most people want to do that. <laughs> Listen, when, if I want to do that, I'll go back and play uh, Phoenix Kerbal again. <laughs> or, or Kerbal Space Program. Yeah, Kerbal Space yeah, is one of those. Yeah. Oh, man, that's great. Well, then, Jack, uh, Ken, uh, this has been a great talk. I really enjoy talking about Void Home. I've been excited about it ever since you first introduced us to it. Um, you know, can't wait to see it in action, experience it. You know, you know, maybe maybe you want to come back and run to see you boys through a oh, hell yeah. scenario or two or something. You know, we would love that. Um, but you know, that being said, thank you so much. And uh let's 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 uh, circle back again at some point. Yep. Uh Ken, you know we love you, brother. You know, you're part of the CU family. And we wish you nothing but the best and all the success in the world. One last time, if they want to go check out Void Home, what's the easiest way to do it? Yeah, the the Kofi link, um, which you'll probably be putting in the chat there for my shop. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, there's my link tree there for all of my other socials. I've got my YouTube you can check out for... Yeah, I've got my like complete cipher tutorial as well. There's some other cipher mini videos, and I've been doing a lot of streams lately as well. Um, uh, I do I do stream a lot of my production of Void Home, so like if you want to see like some of the behind the curtain stuff, there's a lot of like almost everything I've written for the most part has been streamed at some point or another. Um, as well as I stream a bunch of other things. Uh, I had Taryn Pounds Indestructible Boy on the other just day we were going through Dagger Hurt stuff like that so like check out all my socials i'm doing something almost all the time <laughs> yeah. if you want to learn more about void home or cypher system or rpgs in general ken up has a fantastic youtube channel and twitch stream i mean youtube streaming um you can watch his videos live or go and watch them on replay his cypher tutorials are top notch and his Void Home videos, all the clips he's putting up, he's showing you his process step by step. It's really exciting stuff, especially for somebody like me that likes to look in the mind of designers. So that's a great videos and a great resource that I have. So I highly recommend. And Ken Up's channel is just freaking awesome. So check it out. I, I want to talk about some CU stuff real quick. Uh, we are meeting on Monday to finalize a date for CypherCon, so that's really exciting, Ooh. so be on the lookout for that. Hopefully, within the next two weeks or so, we're going to start rolling out the actual dates. We're meeting with uh, MCG on Monday to hammer out the final details, so I'm really excited for that. On a personal note, I just want to say a special... I mean, I want to give my heartfelt thank you, Jason C., Shadow Main, and Zeus Legion. I had an issue with my microphone, and for those that don't know i i had personal issues where i couldn't get a microphone anytime soon and they you know the our community is just freaking awesome i'm just honored to be part of it to be honest and they really you know you know they went above and beyond and got me a new microphone so i hope i sound better and um yeah i just can't yeah. thank them enough you know zeus gave me his personal microphone and jason paid for the shipping thank you so much guys I, you you do not know how much this means to me. It's not the material thing. It's just the, the idea and the thought that when someone in our community is in need, everyone's ready and willing to help. So thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate that. 
And I just want to add to that, Anthony. It's not just how much it means to you. It means to that. I think it means to the whole CU crew as a whole. We really do love this community. You know, we we want everything that, you know, everything to be just the best for everybody. And we really appreciate it. We feel honored to be able to do these videos for you. Uh, and we love the fact that we have such a loyal group of people and the CU community and, you know, just, you guys are awesome. So thanks again. And uh, it's a funny union, but if you like us and you like what we do, join the site for unlimited Discord server for all things Money Cook Games. We have the largest fan one Discord server for everything MCG. We have many games being played daily, There's many campaigns. If you want to run a game, if you want to play a game, the Cypher Unlimited Discord server is the place for you. But if Discord's not for you, join our Facebook group. It's not as big as our Discord, but there's still many great conversations being had there today. We would really appreciate if you sub or follow us here on Twitch or go to our YouTube channel and like, share, and subscribe there. We're still trying to build both those platforms up to can help numbers to help us catch up to can help <laughs> or if you want to support us financially in some way give us a little donation on Kofi. it helps us out with little things like giveaways and stuff like that and planning for CypherCon or you can pick up some cool Cypher Unlimited merch like the shirt Dean got on oh that's the I don't even have a shirt on <laughs> and last but not least we love you guys yep and as usual me coming in from the shadows to bid y'all all deal um but yeah thank you so much cut up for coming on talking to us about void home i am quite excited to try it solo i know we talked a little bit about that in private but yeah i'm very excited to try it out uh, and uh we had someone jack one space said they just bought it so awesome uh nice. yeah so yeah great stuff uh yeah so thank you everyone for coming by and listening uh learn more about void home hope you learned more and hope you check it out and as usual from us at the cu we will see you later peace